worked out. Oh, swanky stuff, my man, Steve. George, George Kahn. Feeling a little low right now. Yeah, George? Yeah, we should have got here. We should have got George's senior. Gang, you were live back. This is the Secret Stash. We're on some smoothed out tip right now for your Tuesday, 10 30 a.m. Helping you get a little bit further on down the path from where we met you to where hopefully we'll leave you at the 12 o'clock hour. Real Talk Radio San Diego. I'm flanked by my man, Joe Stomp, live in the studio today. Joe Stomp is. Come on, man. I, I, how, many, how many titles could I possibly give you? Coach, mentor. Um, author of how many books now? You got what, 13? Yeah, 13, 14. 13, yeah. 14 books. By the way, a handful of them <laughs> uh, splayed out professionally right here in studio, ESPN Studios for us as well. What Joe's unique ability is, and this is uh, from personal experience, I have been uh, Joe's um, student uh, for the last decade, is he has the depth and the capacity to meet anybody where they're at. And that is not an understated skill. That is a, a level of mastery that very few people uh, possess, where whether you're a first time, you know, just opened up your business, like the restaurant tour we talked about a little while ago, or maybe you just got your license. That's Joe's kind of more germane to the whole real estate conversation. You just got your license, trying to figure out how to get your first deal. Or you're on the other side of things where you've been in it for 30 or 40 years, mm. and you're trying to grow a mega team where you've got, you know, integrated complexity of a Fortune 500 company and Joe's got experience and um uh and tools and systems and all the stuff to be able to help anybody where they're at with the hope of leaving them a little better than how he found them, which is why my friend, I got you in the studio today. My hope is that if somebody was lucky enough to tune in uh during the 10 to 12 hour that uh you're going to do just that for them. Picking up where we left off on that thread of referral. That was so good. Would you mind if we dig right back into that a little bit? I think that the um, I'll tell you another story, please. Uh, you know, so every every process has uh, two parts to it. There's the product and the process. Sure. Okay. You buy a house. It's the actual house, and it's the process is how you feel getting the house. Right. You go to buy a car. It's the actual car, but it's how you feel buying the car. And you know, the airline. It's the actually getting me from A to B is the product. That's the airplane. But how you, I feel getting there is the other part. So when you really look at it, Jesse, in your experience, how many people are b- businesses are fully congruent with both the product and the process? You know, people. I got you a great house, but people hated getting it. I got you a great loan, but boy, what you had to put me through to get that great loan, it was really worth it. So if I go back to the restaurant, well, can I, can I, it's not yeah. it's a rhetorical question, yeah. but I can actually answer it. Yeah, it's probably the places that don't have to do a lot of marketing. Say more about that. Well, like, you know, traditional marketing, it costs businesses a fortune. Yeah. You know, and it's I would argue it's what a lot of people miss in right. that ingredient, so right. to speak, of a successful business. Everybody knows the stats. First yeah. five years, yeah. most fail. I think it's like 80 or 90 percent. And then the ones that make it are lucky enough to get out of the first five years, 80 or 90 percent of those. May. So hardly any. It's like an attrition, yeah. a war of attrition to the first 10 years. And, and they have to be well funded yeah. to offset their lack of process. Exactly. Sometimes yeah. product, but usually it's process is broken. Mostly. And they have to augment that with horribly expensive budgeting, uh, uh, marketing campaigns. Well, uh, not, not putting any names out there, but there is a local guy in San Diego who is probably one of the biggest spenders of advertising that there is. I mean, I literally, this guy must have a budget of forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a month. You know, and you can feel comfortable sharing the name. It's just you and I, Joe. <laughs> you know? And, and, you know, and what comes to mind for me is, is this guy's been in business for 17, 18 years, and he's still spending at that pace. Something is innately wrong, because if he has to continually go out to get more business through marketing, advertising, work with business, people who don't know him, where are the thousands of people that have bought a home from him? And then when I talk to real estate agents, I say, what about this guy? They go, have you ever? It's a nightmare working with him. The transaction is horrible. There's no expertise going on. It's just churn and burn. And so why is that, though? Put an answer on that. Why is that? Why is that? Yeah. There, there, there's not a consciousness that they're in it 
to build a referral-based business. That's not their awareness. Their awareness is is next, 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 which is not wrong. There's there's no, that weird. If you choose that path, I would I could show you some extraordinary marketing things. I'm just going to say to you, if you want to make money and you want to have a great life and you want to take time off and you want to feel good in your own skin and you want to explore different parts of your life, your clients will give you that freedom if you are building a referral business. And work with people who know you like you, trust you, yeah. who are introducing people that know them like them, trust them. Right. That's what you would call like a warm introduction, right? That guy that you mentioned, I don't know your, you know, I wish you would drop his name, but um, he's living in the cold zone for his entire career. Well, And that's got a frequency to it, and it's probably not as high as the warm zone. Well, you know, if you meet him, you, you know, not really healthy looking fella, you know, and, you know, and why not? There's a tremendous amount of stress around where is my next tra- transaction coming from? Versus, you know, really being clear that your tribe, your real estate community of people who have uh, bought or sold from you or people who like, you know, you and trust are going to introduce and recommend people to you. So, but that, Jesse, the thing is, is that has to be orchestrated in at the beginning. So when you're first yeah. building your business, that has to be woven into the fabric of the mindset of the business. It's not a technique. Oh, I'm going to go to a seminar. I'm going to buy one of Joe's books and I'm going to build a referral business. No, it is a complete mindset that what you're going to do is, is you're going to make the product and the process congruent. So people become an advocate for you. So how do you get, how do you get to that mindset then? So I mean, it's not a magic pill, right. right? And it's not something you can go to a seminar for two or three days, immerse yourself, and come out, and you're all of a sudden yeah. a master in this capacity. But w- how does someone take that first step? Let's say they're listening right now, and they're like, mm. "Yeah, I, I really want that. I'm ready to make that commitment. That's me." You know, maybe my environment doesn't support it, but maybe I'm willing to be the person who sort of defects out and yeah. does their own thing. However, that message is finding somebody, where do they take the first step? Well, wherever you are right now, you know, if we could just bump your referral business up 10 or 15 percent, that would be easily accomplished just with dialogue, mm-hmm. just with skills, like knowing how to speak to people and ask people in an intelligent way. That's that's an easy thing to do. But as you progress towards 40 percent, 50 percent, 60 percent, there has to be a shift in awareness. There has to be a shift in mm-hmm. Consciousness, And then when you're thinking about having a buy referral only business, because that's really the design, that's the ultimate, like a buy referral only business. Mm. That's really the pinnacle of what you want to hit. And, you know, that could take you a commitment of eight to 10 years. I, I, I believe that anything that requires you know, like a, a level of commitment to mastery is a 10 year journey. Mm-hmm. This, it just takes 10 years to get there. And the primary thing is, is because it is relationship, you know, and everybody comes into our fold with different backgrounds and different ways that they relate to people. You know, like there are some people who are deeply wounded and don't trust. And what they're doing is healing a lot of that inside their business. Mm-hmm. There are people who come to us that are just over loving and over giving and they don't know how to even to receive anything back. Mm-hmm. You know, and so just you know that there's so many different things that occur in the dynamics of people and it's how you evolve yourself personally that you are going is going to be reflected inside your business. So, you know, I have a thought that says work harder on yourself than you do on your business and your business will flourish tremendously. Mm -hmm. And I love that thought. But at the same time, there's a parallel track that is, is that you have to work on the skills that reflect the version of the business that you want to create. And I see a lot of people that are working on techniques and technologies that are the next shiny thing that really have nothing to do with developing a relationship with a person who is going to be an advocate for you for life. And so it's getting those into alignment. You know, I love this word I'm working with right now. It's congruent, 100% alignment with the next highest version of your evolved self, mm. you know, and so how can you be congruent at all times? And when you're brute new to the business, you're, there's one level of, you know, involvement that you have and you can only, you can't force the character to grow. You cannot ask somebody to be more than who they already are. Mm. You know, they, it takes time to grow. It takes time to mature. It takes time to learn and master things. And that's what I love about working with you. We've been together for 10 years, and I'm looking at the radio show as a manifestation of this. You know, you built a business that gives you this space to play. Mm. You know, like this is a playroom for you. Mm. And it's a place where you get to express your creative energy. And, it's, and it juices you to go back into your business. Very few real estate agents in San Diego County are helping 100, 150 families a year like you are, and then taking two hours every week to sit and play. This is amazing. But your referral business has given that to you. How long have you been at it? 10, 12 years? Yep. 
And you're masterful at it. Jesse is masterful at creating a process and a product that people absolutely it just, all they want to do is advocate for. I mean, I'm 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 a recipient of that. I'm, you sold my beautiful home up in Cardiff and did an amazing job doing that. The product side, but on the process side, you know, you know the way that it was, you know, facilitated all the way through to the closing, and where it could have been a very complex, very difficult thing, being, especially with a close relationship. And isn't that cool? We survive that. It's, I mean, that alone is, is that if you can survive a real estate transaction and still be friends with a person, cheery ho, that is good stuff. And that's why, you know, hey, you're the man here in San Diego. Well, <laughs> let me slide a couple 20s under the table real quick. I love that. I appreciate that. Thank yeah, you. Thank you, know you for that. Uh, the, um, the thing that really shot up like a light bulb for me when you were talking about that was the three levels. Yeah. And I definitely resonates with me as I look back into my not so distant past. Dialogue happens first. Now, would you say that's because that's what breeds confidence? Yeah. If somebody if you can say, OK, say these words, you know, like when you walk in, just say exactly this. And so we would say, my purpose is for you to be so outrageously happy with the help that I provide you that you would gladly introduce me to at least one or two people that you care about even before I sell your house. Right. Now, like, don't deviate word for word. There's a lot of NLP. There's a lot of magic going on inside that dialogue. So you just do it exactly word for word. And then we watch people like, well, that doesn't sound like me. And we're like, well, that's why you're here. We we want to not sound like you anymore. <laughs> you know, so you know, like that's that's part of the magic is is letting go of what doesn't work, and then you know working with something that has greater proven possibilities. That's beautiful. Yeah, and so and that's level one, Jess. And you're right. And when a person gets a response where a person says, "Oh, I know a couple of people," they go, "Oh, I think I'll do that again next time." And all we as human beings need is one little victory, mm. like one victory, and then it reinforces right. the behavior. Yeah. And so and the and then the thought is you as you play on down that chronology is if that victory reinforced the behavior of momentum mm. that allows to create a, just a little bit of space, even if it's just a blip of light in the consciousness. Right. Then it allows them to sort of create a little bit more space around themselves to say, oh, I'm on to something right now. Right. Which, of course, is the breeding ground for the mastery, like we talked about earlier. Right. So so the three parts, if I heard you correctly, was first dialogue. Right. Getting confident around, you know, I love the old quote. I think I've heard you say this best, which is we're all the same until we open our mouth and prove otherwise. <laughs> you know, and that's yeah. so funny. We all look brilliant until we start talking. Yeah. 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 Right. Boy, he looks so good. Then he started talking. Ah! <laughs> yeah, I'm sure any uh, female at a bar can probably relate with that one yeah. at some time in their life. Yeah. But so that concept of thinking about what you're thinking about with the purpose of, of, of thinking twice and speaking once. So you're not just on this repetitive track volleying like, uh, you know, one of the Wimbledon guys right now. Just a bink, da da bunk, da da bink, da da bunk, waiting for someone to stop talking so I can start talking. Hmm. It's, it's consciousness. Sit with that. Be a good listener. And then move your, your, well, your space through Move yourself through that space, easy for mm. me to say, of being able then to go further on down the line to be actually in relationship. Right. And that's the final piece. Right. So coming up, my man, we're going to get a little bit deeper into that because I believe, and hopefully you'll um, concur with this, is that that is not only the most important piece, but it's also the hardest part of all because it also forces you to be in relationship with yourself. And something tells me we got two things on the back side of this break. They're going to hit it just there on the spot. So thanks for hanging out. You're live in the stash. Real Talk Radio San Diego. We'll be right back.